Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt with RCRV, and today I'm gonna to show you how we winterize our camper. Now, we live in Georgia, so during the winter time, the low temperatures get below freezing, but generally not lower than the 20s. Occasionally we'll get some teens uh, and single digits, but that's on a rare occasion. So our way of winterizing may be a little bit different than what you should do, depending on the climate you live in. I know some people in Florida who don't winterize their rigs at all, and I know some people up in Connecticut and New York who think I'm crazy for using compressed air. So it really is gonna determine on where you live. We're in Don Carter State Park right now in Georgia, and it's the middle of January. So we typically camp year round. We don't stop because of the winter time. So I'm gonna show you the method that we use to winterize the camper after every camping we do in the winter time so that while the rig is in storage, the pipes don't freeze and burst. So the first thing you need to do is we need to drain the fresh water tank. So your valves will be in different locations. Ours happen to be here. So we have our overflow and then we have our drain valve. So we turn the plug and we make sure that our fresh water tanks are empty because you don't want those to freeze in storage. So the next thing we need to do is empty our hot water tank. So for this, I'm gonna need a one and one sixteenth socket so that I can take the drain plug out of the bottom of the water tank. The drain plug also happens to be where your anode rod is. So the other thing is you want to make sure if you use electrical heat that it is off because we're gonna empty this tank you don't want to plug in your camper by accident the next time we use it and have the heating element turn on. So we're gonna make sure that the electrical is turned off and then we're gonna empty our water tank. And then I open the pressure relief valve. So the next thing we need to do before we start blowing the lines is we need to bypass our water heater. Now in our rig, our water heater, the back of our water heater is right here in the basement storage. Unfortunately, we don't have pass-through storage, but you can see behind this panel that I've already unscrewed is the back of our water heater. So what we need to do is we need to turn this bottom knob of cold water going in and then we need to turn the top knob of the hot water coming out. What this does is bypass your water heater so that your air will come here and bypass, not go inside the water heater, come around this bypass loop and continue to bypass it. This also works if you're using antifreeze. You do not want to put antifreeze in your water heater. So always make sure that your water heater is bypassed. Now, some models will have three valves. This will be very model specific for your rig. You got it. So if you have a rig that doesn't have pass-through storage or your water heater is in a very inaccessible place and you have kids, I highly recommend using them because it's really hard for me to crawl in there. Nico can do it much easier. All right, so now that our water heater tank is drained, we're gonna put our plug back in. Make sure that the valve, the relief valve is closed. And now we're gonna blow the lines with compressed air. So to be able to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up to our city water connection right here, and then we're gonna put this nozzle on which is going to allow us to connect the quick connect air adapter to be able to blow the water lines out all right so for the next step you're going to need some form of air compressor we used to use a portable air compressor that we brought with us that would connect straight to the camper. Since then, we've actually installed onboard air on our F-350, so now we just plug straight into the truck. Either way will work. 
The only thing you want to make sure of is you want to make sure whatever form of air that you're using that you have a regulator because you don't want more than 45 psi of air going into your system and that's really all you need to blow your lines out. So here we have our mini regulator that we're going to plug into the back of the truck and we're going to set this to 45 psi our hose that we're going to connect to the camper and this will compress the air throughout the water lines and then we're going to go through the whole camper and open every valve and make sure all the water drains out until we hear compressed air blowing through so we're plugged in seems like the system is pressurized so we're going to start here at the outdoor shower and what we'll do is i will turn on first the cold water and then I'll turn on the hot water and make sure that we purge all the water out of the line. First the cold. That's gonna be the hot water. And that's all the water that's in there. Now we're gonna work our way down the camper and get the rest of the valves. So when I'm winterizing the camper, I like to start from the front to the back. So our main water inlet is in the very nose of the camper where we're just at the water heater. So we do the outdoor shower following the, the plumbing lines. The next one would be this bathroom. So we have the sink, the shower, and the toilet, and then we'll continue to go down. This also helps as a mental checklist to make sure that you don't miss a single point in your camper that there may be water in the lines. So here we'll start with the sink, try the cold. Wait for the water to be finished until we get air coming out of the lines. And then we'll do the hot side. Next, we'll do the shower. And I've learned that I have to hold this and point it away from me. I can tell you how many times it just sprayed me in the face. <laughs> then hot. And don't forget the toilet. on to the kitchen sink so we'll go with the cold water side first I like to wait till all the little gurgles and bubbles are out And the hot. Now the last thing we're gonna do is go to the outdoor kitchen, which will be the last point in the line where we have valves and we're gonna go empty that faucet. All right, so here at the outdoor kitchen, we're gonna empty the cold. And then the hot side. So while editing this video, I realized I left out two small steps. So I wanted to jump in here and give those to you guys. I also wanted to apologize for my bubbly, charismatic demeanor in this video. I am not a morning person. I shot this video first thing in the morning, right before we left the campground. So I was still in zombie mode. It's still a lot of good information and I wanted to share it with you. 
going forward, I guess that means no more morning videos. So the two tips I left out. So the first one is your water pump. At some point during this process, you want to disconnect the air compressor from the RV and then go inside and turn on your water pump. Then you can go to any faucet and let it run for about 10 to 15 seconds and shut it off. What this is doing is it is purging the water out of your water pump. So your fresh tank is empty and the water pump is pretty much sucking air, which is purging all the water out of the pump into the lines that you're eventually blowing out with the air. The second thing I do, I don't know if it's required, it's just something I do, is when I'm done using the air compressor on the RV, I will go to any faucet valve and I'll just open up the hot and the cold. I'll hear the air rushing out and as soon as it stops, I close them. What this is doing is pretty much decompressing the water lines in the camper. So your air compressor is packing all this pressure in your lines and then as soon as you disconnect it, all that pressure stays in the lines. Now, they can hold it. We're only putting 45 PSI into the lines. My thought process could be totally wrong is that there's probably still some water in the lines that can freeze, water expands. Now our lines are empty and blown, so it's got plenty of room to expand. But if I've already got pressure in the lines and now I have ice that's expanding, causing more pressure, it I don't know, you know, it just helps me sleep at night. So back to the video. All right, so we have successfully drained all of our water pipes from the camper and blown them with air. So the last thing I like to do after I've gone from front to the back is go to our low point drains while the compressed air is running and I'll go open the low point drain valves just to make sure that anything that we've missed will come out the lowest point of the system. Now in our camper, our low point drain valves are right under these steps. Now you'll have two, you'll have a cold water line and a hot water line and we open them both and let the air blow out of those as well. All right, so now our camper has been successfully winterized. Now, it may be my OCD, but for my peace of mind, what I like to do is I will go back through every single valve and open them and let the air run just a little bit. You typically don't get any water, you just get a little bit of mist spray, but I like to do that in case any of the little water bubbles have settled in the line. I can sometimes get a little bit more out. Just gives me peace of mind. I'm not sure if this is a step that's required, but it's something just for my peace of mind I like to do. After we do that, we're going to get our antifreeze and we're going to fill all the P-traps. All right, so our camper is officially done. We've blown all the water out of our lines. So now there's just air. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of RV antifreeze in all of our drains because you do have P-traps that will always have water in them that you cannot drain. This is part of your drainage system. Our main water lines are all empty now. I'm gonna pour just a little bit of antifreeze down the drain just so that the water in the P-trap doesn't freeze and bust our pipes. This is what a P-trap is. If you look under here, so your main drain comes down and this U is called a P-trap that goes up. Now there is always water in here and this water is to block any gases that may come back through the drain lines. So every drainage system will have a P-trap. So we need to go through all the camper and we want to get a little bit of antifreeze in here so that this does not freeze. Now we're going to do the shower because there's a P-trap underneath the shower as well. Anywhere that you have a drain for water, you will have a P-trap. We're going to go to the kitchen sink. Now the last thing we have is to do the outdoor sink.
right, so now all our drains are done. Typically for our camper, for the bathroom, the main kitchen, and the outdoor kitchen, uh, I use a little less than a whole bottle. Now, I probably pour too much for the P-trap. Some of these are going into the holding tanks. That's fine too, because you'll always have a little bit of water in there. So typically, after I've poured all the P-traps, I will take the, the remaining part of this antifreeze and I will pour it into the toilet so that we get some antifreeze in our black tank. So we're getting ready to leave the campsite right now and go to the dump station. After we dump, we will put our black tank treatment in and you usually will put several gallons of water into your black tank for storage. So you'll have water in your tank. So I like to dump the rest of this down into the black tank so that our treatment water doesn't freeze in the tank. The other thing we'll do at the dump station is after we dump and after we've flushed our black tank, we will hook up the compressed air fitting to the black tank flush and we will blow out those lines because they will always retain just a little bit of water. Now you won't see it, there's nothing to empty, but you hook up the line straight to the black tank flush and you just let the air run for a few seconds and that way all the air in the line will just go down into the black tank. Then all we have to do is pour the antifreeze into the toilet and we're done. So that's it guys, this is how we winterize our camper. This is what we do which allows us to be able to camp all year long. If you have any questions about what we do or our procedures or if there's anything I may have left out, please leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to answer it for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you like more videos like this, consider subscribing to our channel. We got some great content coming your way. Thanks for checking us out.